Hey, Matt hey. Stokes here with Jesse Stokes coming to you on Friday afternoon. Friday. And we are, Friday. we are heading towards a baptism Sunday. And so I'm trying to come on for a couple of minutes each day and talk a little bit more about what's going on with baptism. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, because there's so many questions about baptism. And um, so we can just talk about this. Yeah. Do you know, like, there's different modalities, right? So there's submersion. Yep, sprinkling. All right. Then there's what they call effusion. That's where we just pour it over your head like that. And then there's dispersion, where I actually just, like, have you ever seen... Have you ever seen a medieval movie where like a priest gets in front of a bunch of pagan soldiers and he wants to Christianize them before they go out into battle? So the priest just like wets them with water and says like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because in those days, I mean, biblical Christianity was hard to find, but they were trying to like sanctify them through baptism before they went out and died in battle, right? So all these different ideas of baptism have come along over the centuries and they all have different, and does it not say in the scriptures that you've been sprinkled with a pure conscience, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's Hebrews. And then I think First Peter yeah. also talks about the sprinkling. sprinkling of the blood of Christ. Yeah, that was uh, Moses would, um, do the, with the blood. So in Exodus, this is what Jesse's referring to, in Exodus, Moses received the law. And when he received the law, it says he read it to all the people. You know how long that must have taken to read the whole law? So he reads the law to all the people. And then it says he took his up. And he dipped it in the blood of a sacrifice, and he sprinkled it with like that upon the word, upon the law. And then he sprinkled it over all the people. And then the people cried out and said, all that thou hast commanded, we will do. And he was setting up a covenant with them. Yeah. So in a sense, there's a sprinkling implies a covenant. Yeah. A sprinkling also uh, 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 there implies a cleansing. And we also know that there's an interesting mixed metaphor in baptism, right? One is cleansing, but what's the other really strong metaphor that Jesus brings that revolutionizes everything? Death and resurrection. Right, death and resurrection. So you got to understand when we're talking about baptism, we're talking about many metaphors that are melding together here. Primarily the Old Testament concept of cleansing. Um, and then you have the New Testament concept where Jesus, of course, always like takes a thought and he just revolutionizes it. Yeah. And then we find out that Jesus says, what's he say to the disciples when they said, can we sit on your left and right hand? He said, you don't know what you're asking for. Yeah, yeah. What does he say? You're not able to be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. Right. Three times in one, I was wondering if you're going to hit that. Yeah. Three times in one verse, he says the word baptized, right? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized, right? And now the word baptism is moving, not just from cleansing, because he wasn't talking about James and John being cleansed. He was talking about them identifying with what he had to identify with. Same reason John the Baptist, who comes out of the Judean wilderness, right, and is baptizing people, he doesn't feel worthy to yeah. baptize Jesus, but he has to be baptized by Jesus. Jesus wants to be baptized by him, why? It's fulfilling all righteousness. Right, right. Because in, in doing that, he's actually aligning himself with, with John's words, how John was thinking, what John was feeling, what John was doing. Jesus is like, no, you need to do this so that all of this comes into alignment and it, it, it's fulfilling what I am saying is right, right? And so Jesus now is moving the concept just like John was trying to move it from a cleansing, because there's nothing clean about the Jordan River, right? And there's nothing holy about the Judean desert. So he takes the people out of their, what I'm going to call their Hebrew highbrow home pools, and he takes them out and makes them get baptized in the muddy Jordan in the middle of the desert, trying to literally destroy a concept to create a new concept. Did you ever think about this too, Jess, as far as, far as destruction goes? Yeah. That water in the Bible is used to create and destroy. No. Like, so in the beginning, right, the, the earth is void and without form. The very first words of the Bible. Yeah. And, and what, is the, what is the Spirit of God doing? Hovering over the face of the deep. He's hovering over the face of the waters, right? And then everything is created out of, there's only one thing, water. Everything is created out of the water. 
the, the, the land separates from the water. Then comes the dry land, and then comes the beasts of the field and the fowl of the air. But water is what first comes and is the first creative factor. Really interesting piece to consider. Then Moses is, how is he saved? It, it, Passing the Red Sea? No, his mother. Oh, yeah, yeah, puts him on the Nile. His mother puts him in water, and the water becomes a salvation, if you will, for the life of Moses. In the destruction of uh, uh, Genesis chapter 6, how is the world destroyed? Through the flood. For, right, through water. In the destruction of the world, how is Noah and his family saved? Through the ark. Through the ark in the water. Do you see all this happening? So water has this amazing symbolism as you're moving huh. through Scripture. Then comes the then comes the then comes the law, and now there's this ceremonial cleansing that's happening through water. It's fascinating. And then of course Jesus comes and revolutionizes the entire concept by saying it's not just cleansing. This is an idea of actually going under the water, dying to an old life, and then raising again. Romans chapter six, which I bet you probably know, it says, "How can we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? For don't you know what?" Do you not know that you have been baptized into Christ Jesus? You've been baptized into his death. You were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, you too might walk in newness of life. All right, I did not know he was going to have it that nailed. But yes, that's exactly it word for word, yeah, right? You had to memorize that in uh, Tom Allen's Bible class. Well, yeah, then. I just never forgot it. Good on you for holding on to that because that is perfect. That is Romans uh, chapter 6, I'd say verses 1 through 4, right? Yeah. So um, that's going to be a, a prominent part of what we're trying to present on Sunday morning. And then we're actually going to call people to just that are in the moment. Although, you know, we're looking at we've had 10, we had 20, pushing 30 now. We're going to actually call people that are deciding right there in the moment, hearing this message under conviction, say, I want to be baptized. So if you don't know, if you know someone that hasn't been baptized, yeah. we're inviting you to bring them out so that they could have this experience with us where they're actually making this fresh commitment. And something else happens from time to time, and I'm wondering and praying if it's going to happen this Sunday, and that's where the first step before being baptized yeah. is what? Salvation. Is salvation, right? Is you putting your faith and your trust, leaning on, believing in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're going to call people to make that decision because we've seen yeah. in all these years people that make a decision to give their life to Christ and then a couple hours later we're meeting them in the waters of baptism on the very same day, okay. having them rise to newness of life. And there's like few things I would say in this thing called ministry that are more celebratory than watching someone give their life to Christ and then just go publicly proclaim that to the world. That's right. So we want to invite you to be with us for that. Coastal Christian Meets at 2577 Tilton Road in Egg Harbor Township. The message begins at 930 and then the baptism is going to be at Swan Lake. It's a lake in Galloway at Swan Lake Resort right off of Moss Mill Road. I'll try to put it in the chat below so that we can have the address. But it's going to be so much more meaningful for you if you're able to actually come to the 930 gathering at Coastal Christian 27, 2577 Tilton Road and then meet us at Swan Lake Resort for the baptism. Even if you're not being baptized, come support. Yeah, come support. It's a great time because the whole idea, and we'll get into this on Sunday, but one of the ideas of baptism Free is... Free wedding. Right, right. It's supposed to be a celebration that's private. No, it's public. And we'll talk about that. You don't ever, you don't ever see someone baptizing themselves alone, right? And there's a reason for that. And we'll talk more about that maybe tomorrow, Saturday. Maybe we'll talk about that. Why can't somebody baptize themselves with a cup of water alone in their sink? There's a reason, right? That that's not happening, and it's because it doesn't fit. It doesn't sync up with the biblical metaphor and the mixed metaphor that it is. Love to talk to you more about that, but please. The, the primary reason that I'm just throwing out some of these little pieces is because I want to inspire you to bring some people with you to celebrate those that are being baptized and maybe some are even going to be baptized themselves. Sheehan's bringing watermelon. Is there any other reason not to come? I mean, geez, now that just took it over the top. Whole nother level. And she even put the watermelon emoji in there. What else can anyone ask for? We just got done watching your embracing 
of Rosie, and man, it was almost, it was hard to hold back the tears. It was just that beautiful, Sheehan. Watching, like, agape just come out of your heart and into hers is, uh, I'm gonna, I'm, it's gonna stick with you for the rest of the day. So thank you for that. Love you guys. If you see this, please share it with someone else. Invite them to come so that we can totally, <laughs> yes, yes, so that we can totally look forward to seeing you. There.